What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and in this guide for Flagellant in Darkest Dungeon 2, I will explain to you how to use the character, what his abilities do, his strengths and weaknesses, as well as some cool teammates for him to help him get rolling. Starting off, what is Flagellant good at? He's actually more of a frontline support than anything, and he's pretty fun at that. He's also very good at dealing blight damage and negative tokens, as well as he is a very flexible unit, so you can put some good damage moves on him and build a damage team and he can do a bunch of blights and stuff or you can build him to be kind of a tank or some kind of hybrid support damage dealer so he's very flexible in what he can do the weaknesses of flagellant is that many of his abilities inflict self-harm this is because when he gets lower hp he gets different effects especially depending on his paths however that also means that since he's constantly taking damage He's at a higher risk of running into moments where he's actually capable of dying. Because of this, I would say that his second major weakness is timing. Sometimes the enemy misses or doesn't knock him under the threshold that he needs to be at, or his speed doesn't put him where he needs to be in the round, or he doesn't have the cooldown up when he needs it, and you have to plan accordingly to use those cooldowns properly. So timing a lot of his stuff is actually a bit harder than you would initially think. It's very easy to just sit there and slam buttons, but if you do that, he's going to be low health, out of cooldowns, and in trouble. His final weakness is death. I don't mean actually dying, that is a huge weakness that everyone has. What I mean is his personal mini boss encounter that he unlocks after his shrine, which is death. Death can pop up at pretty much any time, it's just a very low chance at resistance nodes. She is definitely a difficult encounter. So if you're running flagellant and you're taking resistance node fights, you have to understand that death can show up to claim him or someone else on your team at any moment. Now let's talk about how to play flagellant. He has two straightforward ideas that you wanna be following when you're playing him. And the first is mostly knowledge based. You have to juggle not only his HP threshold, but also his cooldowns. So this really helps if you are using the academic view or really trying your best to internalize what the enemies are capable of because you'll know when you're safe and when you can get his HP a bit lower or when you have to burn one of his heals to get him back up because he's still in danger. You also have to understand his cooldowns properly so you don't find yourself in a situation where he has to heal with something like sepsis and he doesn't have it. The next thing to keep in mind when playing Flagellant is something that applies to all heroes, but I do feel that it's more important for Damien than anyone else, and that is skill swapping. You can swap skills at any time, just bear that in mind. You can always do it as long as you're not in a fight or some kind of wave fight like a lair. And if you understand the enemies, again, common theme, you are swapping your moves to meet those encounters as needed. He has a lot of interesting moves that have some good niches, but you have to recognize when those niches are happening. So as long as you're swapping skills and keeping track of your cooldowns and stuff like that, Flagellant will do what he needs to do. Next we're gonna talk about Flagellant's skills, and we're gonna start with the Wanderer variants, so. They're pretty straightforward normally. You have Punish, which is, you know, direct damage, melee, pretty much. Fester is cool because it destroys a corpse and then blights everything around it. Doesn't usually need the mastery upgrade. A lot of his skills don't, honestly. Deathless, same thing. Takes a little bit of damage, heals someone for a bit more, which is nice. Endure is only really good on Scourge, unless you have a Stress Resist Trinket or something like that. Uh, Lash's Gift on Wanderer isn't amazing. It's nice. You know, you give someone else some buffs and... They get some stress, but, you know, it heals them, removes stun when it's mastered and stuff, so it's okay. Acid Rain pairs very well with anyone that can hit the back line, like Plague Doctor and Occultist, because they can hit the same two targets, and so you can get this really good synergy for destroying the back line units together that pretty much Plague Doctor and, and uh, Flagellant had in DE1. More and more, this is probably the best ability he has. Or it's definitely one of them. So what he does is he taunts and he gets something called a pain token. So when he gets hit, he heals after his next turn, depending on how many of them he has. At base, it's 10% each. Mastered, it's 15% each. And when it says that he gets the token per being damaged, this also works with his abilities. So a lot of his abilities inflict damage to him. And this gives you a pain token. 
which is really nice. Suffer isn't that good just in general. It's only really good on Scourge, so you don't press this one too much. It just steals dots and gives them DBR. Sepsis, this is probably on every single Flagellant build just because it does something different every single time. And it's a good source of damage and healing in most cases. Undying is a great source of regeneration, definitely worth your mastery point. And, you know, five regeneration for three turns is pretty cool. It's a very good ability. Necrosis needs everyone else to be blighted for it to, you know, do this AoE melee hit essentially, even though it can hit the back line. And so the nice part about this is it heals him instead of damaging him. But you have to run a blight team for this to work. So you need Plague Doctor and probably Grave Robber together. And then Necrosis starts to pop off. But we'll talk about pretty much this is only good or super good in Exanimate. And so, looking at his paths, we'll do the Maniac setup here. And what changes with Maniac is Punish gets a knockback, which is nice. Not high priority to upgrade, but it's, it's cool. Acid Rain gets weakened, but it loses its damage over time effects. So, this is a lot more niche. This is pretty much for the weaken more than anything. And if you don't need the double weaken, then you're not using this. But Sepsis. The Maniac Sepsis is really good. So you don't have to be low HP to fire this. If you have negative tokens or combo when it's mastered, then you can just use it. So if you're like 70% life, you can, you know, use it and dump all your negative tokens on someone. Or an enemy, I should say, which is really good. And it ignores blind, but not dodge. And I think you can transfer stun doing this too, which is hilarious. And then you get Lash's Gift is reworked. And Lash's Gift is much better on Maniac because... He can heal himself at any time, and then he can take negative tokens off of his teammates and then sepsis them onto the enemy. And it's really nice. It's very strong. And so Maniac is running something kind of like this for a, a build. You don't want the Blight stuff because you're not focusing on Blight. And you get more of a support loadout. So you're just taking tokens off your teammates pretty much and throwing them at enemies. And that's really good. So, I like Maniac. It's probably my favorite out of the three he has. And I've also played it the most. Examinant is the Blight damage path. You'd think Scourge is by the name, but it's not. It's Examinant. And so, Punish, Rain, Sepsis, and Lash get changed. And the big change that he has here is that when he's under half HP, he deals more Blight. And so, it's okay to get low HP through, again, more and more, right? Knock yourself down to... Lower HP if you can, hopefully you don't heal past half. And then you instead hit the enemy for a bunch of blight. And so for this, also Lash's Gift changes, right? Yeah, it does. So Lash's Gift gets some really good token effects. Like you get, you know, strength, crit, dodge plus, remove all negatives and combo. All that sounds amazing. Can only use it when you're at 20% HP or lower. I guess technically one under 20%, but because of that, this is really hard to, to justify. Like, at base, it's not that good, and if you spend a mastery on it, it's pretty much for the dodge plus. But you can also, you know, throw out the super exsanguinate, or exsanguinate, the super, uh, sepsis. Actually, I don't know if crit token applies to sepsis here. Lash's gift, I don't really use too much on examinate. You get all these nice tokens and remove tokens, but you have to be under 20% life, which is not easy to do. Because to be under 20% life but not dying or in serious danger is a bit hard. It's kind of like threading the needle. So I don't use this one often. It's not bad, but it's not my top pick. So Acid Rain is like Punish. It gets the same bonus damage if under half HP. And then Sepsis. This is what Exanimate is really good with. And so it's pretty much a cause of death effect where if they have a bunch of Blight damage on top of them, you just do all that damage immediately. And this can be really good for closing out fights. Some enemies that are really tough don't have death blow resist, so you can just finish them right there. And if they do have death blow resist, if you have some other damage over time on them, like burn or bleed, you can, you know, nuke all of your your blight at one time, heal him because he'll probably need it, and then the burn hopefully finishes them or the bleed. And so with Examinate, you want to run a blight team, so probably can't see it under my camera, but you want to run like Grave Robber, oops. Grave Robber and Plague Doctor together, if you can, because that gives you more Blight stuff. And then if you want to run Lash's Gift, you need some kind of tank like Man-at-Arms to guard him. But for Examinate, I would probably 
run something like uh, like this. So punish rain if I need it more and more is just always good to have sepsis and necrosis because you're doing a bunch more blight. But if you need to swap stuff up, you can do something like fester instead of uh, more and more and have someone else be the tank. But it's it's good for him, I think. And then finally, we're going to talk about scourge, which is actually pretty much the toxic path. So here's the setup. For Scourge, the main draw of it is that Toxic gains different effects. And you get a uh, different sepsis again, where it's kind of like the Exanimate sepsis, except if they're comboed, it doesn't spend the Blight. So you can just keep throwing it. But what you do here in this case is get something like Shard Dust, the Ethereal Dust, to take off your cooldowns and then bombard them again if you still have it up. And then Deathless actually gets a lot better. This is a really good Deathless path, so you can heal whoever on the team and himself for a lot. So if you want to go really big support Flagellant, this is the other path to do it with. And let's see, Suffer. This is the only path that Suffer's good on because you can steal horror from people. And what you're trying to do is have him go toxic. So you want to soak as much stress into him as you can. So either you want Lash's Gift, or you want Suffer. Not usually both, and I definitely wouldn't master both for this path. But, you know, if you end up doing that, let me know. Maybe it works. So for this, an example build would be something like, um, like this. So you get the Taunt ability of more and more, so he you know takes more stress from getting hit, hopefully, or crit. You have Punish because this way you still have attacks that you can do, but really the star here is Endure. So you want to keep hitting this, taking the stress off your teammates, pushing him into Toxic to get that stronger effect. And then also more and more is actually, so when he is Toxic, you force them to attack him. And that's really nice. Next, we'll talk about Flagellant's Trinkets. So here they are. The first one is Emancipation, which is pretty nasty looking. It's like one of his teeth pulled out with some uh, some pliers or something. And with this one, he gets 25% bonus damage if he's under 20% HP, which isn't amazing. You know, it's good, but it's not, it's not amazing. What is amazing, though, is when you use Punish, you can steal positive tokens from the enemy. So those evangelists that like to give themselves crit, well, now that's yours. Have fun. Uh, against Captain and the Shroud, who gives everyone a bunch of buffs, those are yours. And all you do in return is lose some bleed resist, and that's really inconsequential. Bleed resist is already very low for him, so it doesn't really matter. Very, very good trinket. His prison, so if you want to... <laughs> If you want to get his face, his literal face, then you can do that. So for his prison, you're supposed to use it with more and more, which is why, you know, apply to attacker when hit. Blight received debuff. This is really good for a blight team. And more and more skills give him, well, just pretty much that one skill, give him uh, plus strength, which strength isn't super amazing for him, but it's nice. And then you get 10% negative banner. And so this one has a few different implications. You can use it on Maniac because you're able to throw negative tokens onto the enemy. And if you have more negative banter, you get more bad relationships to feed more tokens to Flagellant to put on enemies if you want it to go that way. I still wouldn't totally recommend it, but you know, it's there if it happens. And for the Blight Duration Received, this is really good for Blight teams, so you don't really need all three of these at one time. It is nice if you get them, though. So this is a pretty flexible trinket for him. Searing Scripture. At the end of the turn, remove one negative token and remove combo. Endure lets you steal negative tokens and combo, and you lose burn resist. So again, the minus resist doesn't matter that much. And as far as the tokens go, this isn't as good for Maniac because Maniac really wants to, you know, get those negative tokens and then sepsis them onto people. So this is actually a bit better for probably Scourge. And the reason I would say Scourge is because you're trying to use Endure and Scourge gets the stronger toxic effect. And so you want to have Endure on, so you're stealing tokens, cleansing those tokens, and then giving yourself stress to go toxic. 
We'll talk about some neutral trinkets that are pretty good for him as well. So Lockjaw gives you Blight resist piercing, which is nice, so that makes his Blight stick. Misstep can be good if you're going for a purely supportive or Blight flagellant and you don't need the on-hit damage. If you're running something like Maniac, which likes to get negative tokens and throw them at enemies, Selfish Motivation is very good. And let's see, maybe Spoken Sharply because, you know, he loses a bit of HP, but then gets some back when he hits stuff. So that's really cool. And then finally, I think we can talk about the Blight ones. So with this in mind, Kitchen Knives, really good. Usually someone's going to be Blighted when he's fighting them, so... Bonus crit, a little bit of healing, resist blight gives you some extra chances at turns. Corrupting cleaver, blight res piercing, poison ring can be really good for him because he doesn't care about receiving blight. Kuppa is awesome, and there's a lot of synergy if you use Kuppa and you know like kitchen knives for instance. So if he can get someone that can attack him with blight or whatever, some other way to blight himself, then you have, you know, chances at extra turns. And then Galvanizing Goblet. So if you don't want to deal with the stress, all you have to do is keep his HP up, and then you can hit them with some, some Blight and resist some stress. But other ones worth mentioning too. Uh, Redoubt. Redoubt is really good on pretty much anyone slow enough to use it, and it's not too difficult to get Flagellant speed to two or less. So if you pick up a Quirk or use like Pipeweed or some other minus speed item, then you're pretty much there. And same with Clenching Claws. So he's, he's really flexible, and what's fun about building him is choosing if you want to go, you know, supportive and deck him out that way, or if you want to go offensive and then give him Tringus to help him do that. Let's wrap up the video by talking about good teammates for Flagellant. The first two are pretty obvious, I would think, and that's Plague Doctor and Grave Robber, and that's because they are the Blight Synergy team. This is much better if you use Exanimate, but you can really use any of the paths to use these two with them. The easiest region to skip, obviously, will be the Fetter, because Blight doesn't really play well there. Although if you do go there, you can get some nice Blight trinkets. For his final very good teammate, I would actually say it's Hellion. It's not so much that Hellion enables a lot of stuff that Flagellant wants to do, it's more that Flagellant is really good at helping Hellion do what she wants to do. Hellion is a pretty good direct damage dealer with a bit of survivability, immobilize, and reach. And no matter what path Flagellant has, he can do something very good for her. He can help her stay within her HP threshold so she's getting her bonus damage. She can use toe-to-toe -to, -toe to get past him and immobilize, so he's always in rank two if he needs to do stuff like Lash's Gift. It's really good to alternate taunt between the two of them, so they're always getting to like low HP, but then keeping themselves alive either with their own abilities or items and stuff. All right, and that's gonna do it for the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. If there's some other cool synergy that I missed or some other awesome way to use a skill, just let me know. And if you want to check out the community stuff in the description box, there's links to Discord, Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, and even my subreddit, which LOL Reddit. And all that's there if you want to check it out. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.